Praise the Lord. How are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> all right, can we all stand tonight? Let's give God some glory tonight. All right. Thank you, Jesus, for this time today, Lord Jesus. God, we came here to magnify your name, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Oh, I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise his holy, holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise his holy, holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. He came into my life one very special day. He came into my heart and he showed me a better way. He said he'd never depart and this is why I say I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise his holy, holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. For he came into my life one very special day. He came into my heart and he showed me a better way. He said he'd never depart and this is why I say I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to praise the Lord. And I just came to praise your holy, holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's praise God. Let's, let's give him our voice up. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You're so good to me, God. You're so good to me. Magnify you, God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy. Praise the Lord. I love the Lord today. Amen. God is so good to Oh, yeah. Sister Danielle, don't you stop. If nobody else is worshiping, who cares? You just give God praise. Hallelujah. You, you, you just magnify God because you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know how the Lord has set me free. Praise God. Amen. I'm, tell, I'm excited. I've got the joy of the Lord. I've got the joy of the Lord. Uh, I've got the joy of my great and mighty God uh, working inside of me right now because of all the good things that are happening. I'm not making it up. There are good things uh, that are happening in this church. Uh, walls have come down. Uh, amen. There have been breakthroughs uh, in the spirit. Uh, breakthroughs. Uh, God has given you a breakthrough in your family, uh, in your life. Uh, the prophetic has, has happened uh, across this pulpit and into this church, into the congregation. Uh, I'm excited about what God is doing here at First Apostolic Church. 
You know what? You can be seated. I'm just going to start telling you a little bit about it. Praise the Lord. Or maybe I'll take prayer requests, and I'll get into the, the other part later. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll take prayer requests right now. Go We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Sir, church, I have, I have a stack of visitor cards in two weeks. I want you to think about that. I have a stack of visitor cards in just two weeks. I know it don't look like it right now. This is Bible study. We got people out in the hospital and sick and stuff like that. But I have a stack of visitor cards in two weeks. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Sister Selena, I told you. God spoke right through me. I told you there's a there's victory coming. Do you remember? I said it's there's there's a breakthrough. It's happening. It's coming. I I feel it. I think it's and it's sure enough. As soon as I spoke that, things begin to break. Things begin to happen. Things we've been praying for. Things we've been looking forward to. People that we've been praying for. Your your son came to came to church with 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 his with the kids and with his girlfriend, uh, his fiance. Uh, I'm telling you, things begin to happen, sister. Rachel, you saw fruit for your labor, which you had been praying about and praying about and praying about and witnessing and witnessing and witnessing. Sister Kelly, there is a change in you. There, God has lifted something up. I'm, God, I'm t- you can see it on you. Uh, there's a new countenance. Uh, there's a new, uh, you've got a new fire. Uh, hallelujah. Something is happening inside of you. Uh, there is a change. Uh, people have been delivered. There are things people have been holding on to. Uh, finally, uh, they have been loose. Uh, I'm telling you, there's victory. First Apostolic Church, we're in a season now of breakthroughs and victories. You might as well accept it. You might as well receive it. You might as well worship God for it. Just enjoy it. Hallelujah. We are in a season of victory and breakthrough. Praise God. Just keep that spirit right now. Let's just pray. Uh, Lord, you heard the request. Uh, God, you know the the need of all the visitors that we've had here. Uh, You know, God, the ones that haven't came, uh, but we're praying for them, Lord. Uh, God, send them dreams. Send them visions. God, uh, work in their life. Use us. uh, Use this congregation. uh, Use this church, God. uh, Use us uh, outside of our abilities, outside of of what we're comfortable with, God. uh, Just use us any way you want to, God. I give myself to you 100% whole and complete, God. You can have me, Lord. You can have my voice. You can have my feet. You can have my hands, God. Lord, you can have all of me, God. Just use me to win the loss. Use me. Amen. I'm going to celebrate the victories that we are having around here. Hallelujah. There's too many times that we say, woe is me, and oh God, why this, and and, and why that, Uh, because uh, when God delivers you, uh, when God answers your prayer, you don't even give him praise sometimes, you don't even, you don't take time to celebrate, Uh, and I'm going to celebrate what God is doing, brother rushing was in the hospital, yes he, yes he was, Uh, he's at home, yes he is, Uh, but I visited him three times, uh, and I'm telling you, uh, that we, we both gave thanks to God uh, for his tender mercy uh, and for his grace uh, and for his awakening uh, and bringing, uh, stirring up, uh, brother rushing and stirring up, uh, oh God, uh, I'm telling you, uh, Brother Russian doesn't think it was a bad thing that he had this mild heart attack. Uh, He looks at it as the mercy of God, uh, and he's thankful uh, that God has brought him through uh, and brought him out, and he's thankful uh, for the many more years God is going to give him, uh, and he has said, I'm going to serve, I'm going to serve, I'm going to serve. I'm telling you what the devil means for harm, God means for good. I was in the hospital when the doctor came to, to Juliana's room, uh, and he said, you can come in if you want. I said, okay. Uh, he said, he looked at her, and he said, I got good news. Uh, and Juliana looked right at me and put her thumbs up. Uh, hallelujah. We know God answered prayer. We know that God has touched her and healed her body. And I'm thankful. For what God is, I prayed a long time ago, God, give us signs, give us wonders, give us miracles, give us healings. And let me tell you, I know maybe I'm not that bright, but I prayed that prayer. And, I, and then after I see all these things happening, and then I see God coming through and, and, and making a way and healing and delivering. And I'm thinking, God, why does all this have to happen? And God said, you asked me. 
for miracles, for signs, for wonders, for healings, for deliverance. All those things require somebody to be sick, somebody to have an addiction, up, somebody to need a healing, somebody. So I'm sorry. But I wanted to see the working of the Holy Spirit, and I want to see the working of our great God. Hey, man, I feel good in the Holy Ghost. You may be seated. I don't have a lot to talk about tonight. I was going to go into the gifts of the Spirit and, yeah, and things of that nature, and we'll, we're going to do that. But I just want to teach, preach on, on a subject quickly. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse number 10. I'm just going to go right into the, the opening scripture. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Brother Genta, he ministered his wife. You guys don't, I'm going to let Sister Melissa probably testify and, and talk about this, but, but Sister Genta didn't know Sister Melissa from Eve. Let me tell you how awesome God is. God spoke to Sister Genta. She went, I'm telling you, God, God told her some things that only Sister Melissa knew. And I'll let Sister Melissa tell it, but, but God spoke right through Sister Genta, and she, she spoke right to some things miraculous. We're in that kind of church, and that's the kind of church I like to be in. We will have the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Amen, and God's going to use you. It's not... It's God's spirit, that you have God's spirit. Amen. You don't have, therefore, you can operate in any gift if you have God's spirit. Ezekiel 37, 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. I just want to say this one thing. I'm going to read some more scripture. This is a title. A revived army is a dangerous army. A revived army is a dangerous army, and I'm going to tell you why. CQ 37, verse number 1. The hand of the Lord, the Lord was upon me, the prophet said, and carried me out in, in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And I and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. There was a lot of bones. There was a lot of dry bones. It's interesting that the, the man of God takes notice and mentions this in his telling of this experience that he had with God. And I, I'll say this. In this area, in this church, in this, in this city, there's a lot of dry bones. Remember, there are once a mighty army. There's a lot of dry bones. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, and most of us know the answer, O Lord God, thou knowest. I'm not going to say yes. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> I'm just going to say, you know the answer, God. And it's interesting that the man of God said that my son would, he would do the same, same thing. Dad, you know. I would, say, get, I would ask him a question, and if he didn't know the answer, he would say, you know. Why don't you tell me? I don't think the, the prophet was being a smart aleck. I don't think he was... He was uh, um, trying to uh, get a rise out of, out of God, but, but I think he was answering wisely. I have no idea. I don't know why, because that man of God knows he can't do it. And let me tell you something. I, that's, that's my prayer a lot. Lord, I can't heal anybody. Lord, I can't give anybody the Holy Ghost. God, let me, this is what I pray especially. I can't make anybody go to church. I can't make them be faithful. I can't make them give any offering. I can't, make, I can't make anybody commit their life to you 
but you know. <laughs> but you know, Lord. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God, thou knowest. Verse number four, and he, and he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You see, that's the, that's the main message or the main teaching for the, the preacher or the pastor or the evangelist, or the missionary, the, the man of God. Is, his job is to prophesy. His job is to bring the word to you. <clears throat> o ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God uh, unto these bones. That word prophecy, let's not get so worried about it. Don't get so hung up on it. It simply means to give a good, encouraging message. That's what it means. Be encouraging. Be, be uh, uh, confidence. Have confidence. Give, instill confidence in people. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sign you upon you. And I looked up that word because we go past it so many times. I said, I want to know exactly what that means. I had an idea, but I want to know exactly what it means. It is the piece that connects your muscle to your bone. You don't, your muscle is useless, and your bone is useless unless you have that sign you. Unless you have that tendon, unless you have that piece that attaches. And if you've had knee surgery or knee problem, you understand what I'm talking about. If you've had issues where that, that has separated, you can't walk. <laughs> you can't do much with, when that is gone. The, there's another definition for that word, and it means strength. It's the strength of a building. Is it sign you? The strength of something. Think about that for a moment. And he said, Jesus, or I'm sorry, God was telling the man of God, and I will lay sign, I will give you strength to pull yourself back together again. God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to, how is this going to happen? Don't worry, I'm going to give you strength. And we'll bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. I'm going to cover all your wounds, all your injuries, everything that happened. I'm just going to cover it up. I'm going to make you new again and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Because we see what God has done with your brother, with your sister, with a visitor, with yourself, you're going to know that he is God. So the man of God in verse 7, God just told him what to do. This is what I want you to do. So the man of God, now it's his turn. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together bone to his bone. I'm telling you, every time before something great happens or something uh begins to break, there has to be a noise, and there has to be a shaking. And as the other man of God said, simply when he looked up at the cloud and, and saw just a little cloud the size of a man's hand, he said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Uh, and this man of God said, uh, as I prophesied, there was a noise, uh, and then there was a shaking. Uh, and the Bible says in the days of Noah, the deep, the earth began to break, uh, and something in the waters of the deep, the Bible said, begin to come forth. Uh, I'm believing today, uh, and I'm prophesying today uh, that there is something deep uh, beginning to happen here at, at First Apostolic Church. Uh, there is something uh, that is beginning to break forth forth uh, and revival is in the land uh, and revival is fixing to happen not just here in this church but in you and in your family and in your life uh, I'm, I'm telling you kids are coming back to god uh, backsliders are coming back to god uh, grandchildren are coming back to church uh, in the name of jesus 
I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I am encouraged today. I told the church a while back, I watched a stupid movie called Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, I did. But I saw a scene in that movie that reminded me of what's happening right now. He was The captain was chasing the, another ship, uh, and the storm was, was, was raging, and the wind was blowing, and the, rain, and the water was, was the rain was coming down, and the waves were washing up on top of the ship, uh, and it looked miserable. And it looked terrible, and, and it looked like nothing good was happening. And the second mate went up to the captain. He was smiling. Oh, Captain Jack Sparrow, he was smiling, and he looked at him, and he said, What puts you in such a good mood? <laughs> and Captain Jack Sparrow looked at him and said, We're gaining. We're catching up. And I know sometimes it may not look like that, but I'm going to tell you right now, we're gaining. We are catching up. We are, we are gaining. We're catching up. And I can feel it. I can feel it in the atmosphere. There was something about the atmosphere in that Wells revival, that Welsh revival that I've talked so much about. There was something that it went beyond the church service. It went beyond the building, the four walls, uh, and the prayer meetings that, th that they were having. Uh, there, was, there was such revival and such a move of the Spirit of God uh, that it went into the bars. And it went into the saloons. And men who came faithful, they were faithful to the, their seat in the bar. And they were faithful to the drink that they would have at the bar. After work, it was the bar. After work, it was the bar or rugby. It was just two things, sports and the bar. And they were faithful to it. Uh, but something began to happen in that country called Wales because a bunch of people started praying. A bunch of people started having revival. And this, the atmosphere changed. Somebody was sitting on a seat and they poured their usual drink uh, and they grabbed it and they went to drink it. And I'm going to the prayer meeting. Because the atmosphere had changed. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear the sound. Oh, I'm telling you, I, was, I have come to this place. God has brought me here for such a time as this. Bone to his bone. Things begin to come together. <laughs> Things that were so separated and so apart and, and so scattered that it looked like it could never, ever happen. It looked like nothing. It's impossible to put that back together again. But God said, I'm going to give you strength. And when I beheld, lo, verse number 8, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, uh, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Yes, it's a process. Yes, there is one thing that happens, then another, then another. It's, there are steps. Amen. There are steps. Somebody, something may look like it's coming together, yet there's no breath. Just hold on. It's coming. Then he said unto me, in verse 9, the, the voice of the Lord spoke and said, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Come from all four directions. Come from the north, east, south, and west. Uh, give us such a revival. Give us such a spirit of God's Uh, anointing and God's power that it looks like it's coming from everywhere that you can't even put your finger on it because it's over there. No, it's over there. No, it's over there. No, it's over. No, it's there. It's there. It's everywhere. Verse number 10, we read it to open up. So I prophesied as he commanded me. See, that's the man of God's even though it looks impossible. God, what have you got me into? All I see is dry bones. All I see is dryness, chaos. All I see is sickness. All I see is trouble. All I see is financial need. All I see is families broken. God, what have you gotten me into? Prophesy. Shut up and prophesy. Amen. Sometimes we need to tell ourselves that. Just be quiet. Shut up, flesh. 
All the flesh can do is complain and cry about everything. Let's move into the realm of the spirit. And I think you can do this yourself. You can go to a situation. You can prophesy to it. You can speak to it. I speak life. I speak life. This revival that we are experiencing is going to take more than just pastor praying for people to get the Holy Ghost. It's going to take more than just myself or Brother Starr baptizing people in the name of Jesus. It's going to take more than just myself or Brother Starr teaching a Bible study to somebody. It's going to take, like Brother Gentle was saying, you have to be my assistant. God, you have to let God use you in, in whatever capacity that you can be used, whatever gifting excuse me, whatever gifting you may have. You have to let God use you in, in your gifts. And, they, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood up upon their feet in exceeding great army. And I wanted to talk to you today on the title of revived army is a dangerous army. Revived means this. It means to regain life. It means to regain consciousness. It means to regain your strength. And let me tell you why I, th I think a revived army is a dangerous army. Because a revived army is an army that has been defeated, Sister Danielle. A revived army is an army that is lost. A revived army is an army that maybe they quit. But a revived army is an army that only knows defeat. So, Pastor, why do you think a revived army is dangerous? Because they know what not to do again. They know what mistakes not to make. Does that make sense? You're not experimenting anymore. <laughs> you know what's going to get the job done. You know how to get victory because you've already done it wrong once. You're not going to do that again. Amen. That sound good? That sounds good to me. So revive. A re someone who, is, who has been revived, it means to you've received new strength, new energy, new purpose. You've been repurposed. Anybody ever repurposed something? It's Original usefulness has gone away, but somebody has saw that and said, you know what? I think we can do something else with it. I think it could have a, a new purpose. We can repurpose this. And so the same is for you and for your ministry and for your life. God sometimes can repurpose you. A revived army has been restored. A revived army has been improved because revival means to improve something or to give it a, a, a new position or to improve its existing condition. So you have been improved even though it looked like you had nothing left to offer. Amen. Would you stand? I want to say this to the devil. Look out, devil, look out. I have a revived army here at First Apostolic Church of Mount Morris. There is a revived purpose. There is a, a renewed hope in this building and in this church. And I'm not just saying it from this pulpit to be Pastor Smiley. <laughs> Our pastor good news all the time. Man, I, Brother Genta was clear about that. You don't, you know, anybody can say you're going to be healed, you're going to be healed. But did God say that? <laughs> now, can God heal? Yes. But, man, I want to know through the Spirit, is this, what the, the, is this what God said? There are times, Brother Star, when I know without a doubt it's the will of God. And there are sometimes I'm just praying in faith. <laughs> 
I'm just praying in faith. But right now, I know the will of God, without a doubt, that this uh, church, this assembly, is on its way to great things. And it's not just me saying it. It's everybody around us saying it. There is something in the air. We may have the smallest church in the area, but let me tell you, we have the most electrifying church in the area. Praise God. That means something. Amen. That's, to me, that's, that's good news. That's great news. And I'm just looking forward to the, the doors that God is going to continue to open, not for me, but for this whole congregation, for all of us. I was talking to brother and sister... Uh, Reyes and and Brother Reyes was so surprised that Brother Rushing called. He's in the hospital calling Julian. <laughs> he said, I couldn't believe it. He's calling her, asking for her and wanting to talk with her. And I said, Brother Reyes, we are a church family that loves one another and that looks out for one another. I said, this is who we are. And we are all concerned about each other. The Bible teaches us, and I'm closing with this, treat each other with kindness. And I've told you before, that word comes from the Greek word kindred. And it comes from the Hibbley word kin. You know what I mean? Is he or she kin to you? Do they go to First Apostolic Church? Then yes, they are. (laughs) to treat each other like family. The apostle went on, he said, pray for one another. Encourage one another and love each other. And that's the kind of church I want to be part of. A church that encourages, loves, and prays for each other. And I don't mean treat me like the weirdo family member. I mean treat (laughs) <laughs> treat me like you want to be treated amen brother star will you just dis- dismiss us in a good a good prayer